Oda has finally confirmed that the pirate king, Roger, conquered the world without a devil fruit. For years, the community had speculated that Roger might have had the power to control the seas or possess some godlike ability. However, in chapter 1047, Kaido revealed that Roger defeated all his foes with Haki alone, as only Haki can transcend all. Luffy took this statement to heart and pushed his use of Haki to an unseen level. His Haki grew so strong that it made the lightning from the heavens look tiny. Kaido's revelation made us question just how powerful Roger's Haki would be. This information came not only from his clash with Roger and his crew but also from witnessing Roger's peak during the God Valley incident. This battle paved the way for Roger's legacy and the generations to follow. Before our current story, Roger and his crew formed a temporary alliance with his longtime rival, Vice Admiral Garp, and his squad. Together, these two legends went up against the Rocks Pirates, whose crew consisted of their captain, Rocks D, Zebek, Whitebeard, Big Mom, Kaido, Shiki, and John. However, the mention of Captain John, whom Buggy has been obsessed with due to his treasure, seemed to confuse the narrator, who quickly dismissed it. Regardless, there are many more legends that came from this crew, but the Rocks Pirates, especially Zebek, were considered to be Roger's strongest and most notable opposition. Zebek's crew consisted of various overpowered devil fruit users. We know Big Mom ate the Soru Soru Nomi early in her life, and the other members weren't far behind in strength. Most importantly, Zebek must have been ridiculously overpowered and ambitious to have all these unique characters following him. This battle resulted in the dissolution of the Rocks Pirates, indicating that Zebek likely died during this war. For them to be defeated by Roger, who, along with his crew and Garp, possessed no devil fruits, reinforces Kaido's statement. Roger's Haki, which comes from ambition and undying will, proved that the truest form of power is that of self-belief. As Rayleigh once said, Haki is a power that lies dormant in all the world's creatures, representing fighting spirit and intimidation. It is not different from the things that humans can naturally sense. The act of not doubting that is trend, and Goldie Roger was the epitome of this. To understand how Monkey D, Luffy will become the strongest and harness the power of a pirate king's hockey, we are going to break down the entire life of Goldie Roger and how he became the strongest man to ever live. Goldie Roger was born in Logetown, a city on the Polestar Island in the East Blue, 77 years ago from the current story. Logue Town is often referred to as the town of the beginning and the end, because Roger was both born and executed there. Despite the lack of details about Roger's upbringing, Garp mentioned that Roger's childhood was much like his own son, Ace, where he went through a difficult time and developed a fear of losing his loved ones. This could imply that Roger lost his family at a very young age. Growing up in Logue Town, a hot spot location close to Reverse Mountain and just out of sight of the Red Line, where many pirates would pass through, likely fueled Roger's ambition to become a pirate himself. The question remains of how Roger obtained his notable straw hat, which was eventually passed down to Shanks and then to Luffy. This straw hat holds huge significance, as an identical but gigantic straw hat is frozen and hidden away by Imusama. Despite living a reckless life, Roger got lucky and survived the loss and hardship he faced as a child. This molded his personality to hold loyalty above all else. Garp recalled how Roger destroyed an entire army of a nation, which showcased his strength and determination from a young age. After his journey began, Roger met Silver's Rayleigh, who was living on a stolen ship after his house burned down. Impressed by Rayleigh's ship, Roger believed their encounter was fate and asked Rayleigh to join him in turning the world upside down. Whitebeard later mentioned these words during the Marineford War, based on what he learned from Roger after visiting Laugh Tale. In this version of Roger's tale, he had yet to learn the secrets of the past and future, making his desire to turn the world upside down more personal. Initially, Rayleigh laughed and refused Roger's offer, but he was eventually swayed, and the two became best friends and lifelong partners. Roger then became the captain of the Roger Pirates, with Rayleigh as his first mate. Around the age of 25, 
Roger and his crew were renowned as rookies in the Grand Line. This status was confirmed when Brooke and the Rumba Pirates entered the Grand Line in Sabaity around 52 years ago, and Brooke heard of a rookie pirate named Roger. Not much is known about Roger's early crew, but it is assumed that members like Scopper Gabon, Taro, and Sunbell were among the first in his crew. At some point, the crew needed a new ship and hired the master shipwright Tom from Water 7 to build their famed Oro Jackson, constructed using wood from the legendary treasure tree Adam, known as the strongest wood in existence. The Oro Jackson lasted through the entirety of Roger's life. Roger and his crew sailed into the New World, and 13 years later, at the age of 38, they reached Lone Star Island, the final island that the log pose pointed to. It's unclear why it took so long for Roger to follow the log pose to his final destination, but it's likely that he was simply enjoying the journey. Before Roger, no one had set foot on this island in 800 years, making the Roger Pirates the first in known history to do so. His ability to hear the echoes of knowledge allowed him to understand the messages of ancient objects, including poneglyphs, without being able to read the language. This ability was crucial in his journey. Upon reaching Lodestar Island, Roger and his crew noticed that the log pose was going haywire, indicating that there was one more island ahead. Roger learned about the importance of the poneglyphs and understood that the red poneglyph would lead them to the true final island. However, before Roger could begin this journey, the Roger pirates experienced the God Valley Incident. The God Valley Incident occurred when Rox D. Zebek, the captain of the Rox pirates, planned to attack and take over God Valley, an island where the celestial dragons were located along with their slaves. Roger, opposing Zebek, joined forces with Vice Admiral Garp and put an end to Zebek's tyranny. After the battle, the island of God Valley vanished, and the fate of the slaves and celestial dragons remains unknown. The reasons for Roger's involvement in this war are unclear, but it may have been due to a personal conflict with Zebek or a disagreement with his actions. The community has theorized that Shanks, being a one-year-old baby at the time, was found in God Valley and taken in by Roger and his crew. However, whether this is true or not is uncertain. After defeating the Rocks Pirates, Roger continued his mission to find the road Poneglyph to reach the final island. Shanks and Buggy joined the crew during this time. Roger and his crew also engaged in battles with other pirates, such as the Maelstorm Spider Pirates, which led to resentment and a later betrayal by Squard, who stabbed Whitebeard during the Marineford War. At some point, Roger managed to sneak into Tato Land, Big Mom's territory, and gain a copy of her road Poneglyph, which later inspired the Straw Hats to do the same. When Roger was 47, he learned about a samurai from Wano, Odin, who had joined the Whitebeard Pirates, sparking Roger's interest in meeting him. Sadly, at the age of 49, Roger was afflicted with an incurable disease, prompting him to propose one last adventure to sail the entire Grand Line. During this final journey, Roger encountered Shiki the Golden Lion, who proposed an alliance to conquer the world. However, Roger rejected the offer, leading to a battle between their crews. Before the battle could escalate, a storm intervened, destroying half of Shiki's fleet and giving Roger the victory. This meeting also revealed Roger's philosophy of piracy, similar to Luffy's, emphasizing freedom and adventure without the constraints of kingship or heroism. Roger's life and adventures were driven by his desire for freedom and adventure, making friends along the way without the burdens of rulership. Roger's strength lay not in subjugating others but in sharing his freedom with them. His conqueror's hockey was a testament to his self-conquest and fearlessness, allowing him to move forward despite any obstacles. At the age of 51, Roger and his crew encountered a marine squadron and easily defeated them, catching the attention of the Whitebeard pirates. Roger clashed with Whitebeard in a legendary battle where their conqueror's hockey clashed without their weapons touching, lasting three days and nights. Despite being rivals, Roger and Whitebeard exchanged gifts, showing mutual respect. Roger then revealed his goal to reach the final island and asked Odin to join his crew for a year to translate the road poneglyphs. Odin agreed, and with his wife Toki, 
daughter Hayori, and followers Nekamamushi and Inurashi, they embarked on the final journey. During their journey, Roger easily found the Chandorian Golden Bell on Skypea and learned about the ancient weapon Poseidon. He left a message for the next person who could hear the voice of all things in Skypea. Returning to Water 7, Roger visited Tom, the shipwright who built the Oro Jackson, and met a young Frankie. It was revealed that Roger had already obtained a copy of Big Mom's Road Poneglyph, similar to Luffy's actions in Whole Cake Island. Roger's journey continued with Inuarashi, Nekamamushi, and Odin aboard the ship, revealing the locations of the final two road poneglyphs in Zo and Wano. Passing through Fishman Island, Roger found the final road poneglyph in the sea forest. He also discovered a blue poneglyph containing Joy Boy's apology to Poseidon. After stopping at Wano due to Toki's illness, Roger and the crew made their way to Zo, where they found the final road poneglyph inside the whale tree. Roger's health was deteriorating, so they had to hurry to reach the end of the Grand Line. Leaving behind a sick buggy in Shanks, the crew made their way to the true final island. There, Roger learned the true history of the world, the significance of the D, the mystery of the ancient weapons, and Joy Boy's treasure. Roger laughed at this discovery and named the island Laugh Tale. At the age of 52, Roger became known as the Pirate King, the first to sail the entire Grand Line and reach Laugh Tale. With his fame came many pirates seeking him for his treasure. Knowing they were too early to change the world, Roger disbanded his crew and set out to have a child. He also asked to meet Whitebeard, telling Rayleigh he would not die, indicating his will would live on, much like Joy Boy's. In his final meeting with Whitebeard, Roger offered to reveal the will of D and the location of Laugh Tail, but Whitebeard declined, content with his life. With little time left, Roger set out on a quest for some good food, symbolizing his desire to enjoy his remaining days. Roger's life took a dramatic turn when he met Port Gastie, Rouge, the love of his life. She became pregnant with their child, Ace, or and if a girl, but with Roger's life nearing its end due to his illness, he didn't have time to wait for the child's birth. He left to get some milk, a humorous euphemism for his brief departure. To protect Rouge and their unborn child, Roger surrendered himself to the Marines, who imprisoned him and prepared for his execution in Logue Town, his birthplace. In prison, Roger met with his old enemy, Garp, with whom he shared mutual respect. Despite their many skirmishes, they both believed that infants shouldn't have to pay for their parents' sins. Roger asked Garp to find his child and take care of them. Garp went on to find Rouge, while the Marines put Roger in the gallows to make an example of him. Just before his execution, Roger revealed the existence of the One Piece, his greatest treasure, sparking the Great Pirate Era as pirates were inspired by his words to seek the treasure and continue pirating. With Roger's death, the era of the Pirate King and the strongest hockey user came to an end, setting the stage for the adventures of the next generation of pirates, including Luffy.